just when I thought we could finally close the book on the whole Russiagate scandal and all the propaganda, the fear-mongering, the McCarthyite smears of a foreign entity attacking the, you know, West purity of democracy, I thought that was kind of behind us now. But, like most things, like a TV show or anything else, it gets rebooted. And that's what apparently is happening right now. We had Russia Gate, we had all the scandals and realized it was complete bullshit. We knew that there was nothing, no substantial evidence to prove any of those claims. We knew that the uh, the Mueller report turned out to be empty and it was just a, a smear tactic campaign because Donald Trump being the outsider of the establishment scared the establishment so much that they had to invent this conspiracy that somehow Russia, along with a bunch of memes and and facebook ads somehow attack u.s democracy even though the united states not only attacks other people's democracies all across the world the united states is known to attack their own democracy they can't even hold their own democracy capable of their own hands but somehow russia is is capable through memes and 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 and, and facebook ads it was ridiculous just so i thought we were going to close the book on that they're going to reboot it but it's not your usual dysfunctional of characters. Because like any reboot, they have to there's gotta be some originality. So instead of the United States getting hacked by Russia, it's now Canada, my country here, Canada getting attacked by China. I kid you not. I kid you not. We're going through this all over again. This time with China somehow interfering with the 2019 Canadian election. And if you think this is a joke or some sort of hyperbole, it was actually featured in Global National, as you're about to see here. And someone did a uh, did this video up here. And watch the broadcast of Global News having exclusive account, uh, 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 accusation of somehow China interfering with the 2019 federal election here in Canada. Take a listen. Good evening from America's capital on the eve of important midterm elections in this country. Election deniers are on the ballot. The Democrats say democracy itself is on the ballot. And That's kind of weird that they had to add that in. Election deniers are on the ballot. People that want to save democracy. Why even mention any of that? Like, that's the the one thing I can't stand about news media. And I and they're trying to put a spin on it for obvious reasons. They're trying to put a spin on it to make it sound like, oh, you know, the Democrats care so much about democracy. They're putting it on the table. That is why you have to go out and vote. Meanwhile, the Republicans, who are the election deniers, even though Democrats denied the 2016 election, for five straight years, five straight years, the Democrats uh, completely uh, lost shit when Donald Trump was elected. I think they even lost they lost shit when George W. Bush was elected. So uh, pretty much everyone's a denier at one point. Everyone's a denier at one point. And if we're denying so many elections, maybe the fact that democracy in America is such a joke, maybe that's something to look into. But it's weird that Canada, a Canadian television show, uh, news broadcast, is going to mention that. It just seems weird. And though what's decided here won't change who is in charge in the White House, it is a referendum on President Joe Biden's record. We'll get to all of that in just a moment. But we begin tonight closer to home and a global news investigation into allegations of foreign interference into Canada's federal election in 2019. Multiple sources tell Global News at least 11 candidates received clandestine funding from entities affiliated with the Chinese Communist Party. Sources also tell Global News Canadian intelligence officials have briefed the Prime Minister on their findings. This is what Justin Trudeau told us today. Unfortunately, we're seeing uh, the country's uh, state actors from around the world, whether it's China or others, uh, are continuing uh, to play uh, aggressive games uh, with our institutions, with our democracies. Now, notice that Prime Minister Trudeau or any politician, Notice how they'll say, you know, we care about the integrity of country's democracy. We care about the integrity. 
when it's their country getting attacked by China or Russia, the alleged attack. We don't know for sure. It's all an allegation. But Canada, notice how Canada never says any of this when America is interfering with another country's election. Like they did with Brazil, like they did with Latin America, like they did with uh, Middle Eastern countries, like they've done all over the world. All over the goddamn world. Even countries that not are considered a threat to us. The United States interferes in almost every single democracy, including ours. Including ours. And nobody says nobody nobody says a word about it. Nobody says a word about it. But there's an allegation that China somehow hacked into and interfered with the 2019 election. Oh, we can't allow this to happen. Countries need to have their democracy. They need to have their respect. They need to make the decision for themselves. Isn't that kind of interesting? Isn't that kind of interesting? The United States has been doing it for decades, not a word, but allegations of China. Wow, all of a sudden we care so much about the sanctity and the purity and the and the and the security of our democracy. Global News investigative reporter Sam Cooper broke this story. Our Ottawa bureau chief Mercedes Stevenson is following it up tonight. They are the kinds of persistent threats that keep Canadian intelligence leaders up at night. Foreign entities acting covertly to influence and subvert Canadian democracy. Global News has learned that those very things have already been happening here, with sources telling us that Beijing is pulling the strings. Sources tell Global News that in January of 2022, Canadian intelligence delivered a series of sensitive briefings to warn the Prime Minister and select members of his cabinet that the spy agency had evidence China was running sophisticated operations, including allegations of placing Chinese agents into the offices of sitting members of parliament. And so this is what makes it this reboot more original, because the last five years in America, they talked about how Russia was interfering with these memes and these Facebook ads and how they were virtually confusing people to interfere with their decision-making in the process of American democracy. Which, that alone, just saying it out loud, is completely bullshit. <laughs> First of all, it's also insulting, for one thing. It's insulting to the American public to say that we're so stupid that we're going to fall into line by a meme that you saw on the internet that looked like it was made by any 12-year-old, but somehow is linked to some Russia hacking firm. Like, that's kind of insulting to the general public that people assumingly are going to fall for it. They're going to fall into the Russian propaganda, and that's how they undermine democracy. But this time here in Canada, oh my God, now we actually have people, we have spies that are actually overtly in the parliament building. <laughs> Someone alert the presses or sell this to FX. Because this sounds like, this sounds like something of the Americans. Which, uh, maybe this is the new spinoff series, the Canadians, and it's going to be, you know, a Chinese spy agency coming to Canada and pretending to be some family from Saskatchewan. I don't know, that sounds interesting enough. I, I, I just can't believe that, you know, after five straight years, they're going to try and pull this. And like I said, I don't know if it's true, I cannot confirm nor deny this. I'm just saying it's very suspicious that... All of a sudden, after trying to close the door on Russiagate and putting that to rest, because we all know that it's just completely out of the open, it's a, nothing more than a smear campaign, nothing more than a McCarthyite smear orchestrated by the Democratic Party because they didn't want to get investigated for losing their own election. Trying to close the door on that, all of a sudden this pops up. And considering we're close to another federal election, I think it's next year, 2023, we're having a federal election. I can't I can't really tell. Um, that's the one thing I give credit to the United States. At least they actually have time periods where, you know, every four years you have a general election. Here in Canada, 
I don't even know. I don't even know. I think it's every four years, but at the same time, we also, you know, do pop-up elections and we do this. I think we do elections just because we're bored. Honest to God. I think sometimes we just like, you know what? Um, we had a good year, so uh, I'm, I'm kind of bored of this. So, you know, let's just do an election. Let's campaign a little. Let's just make sure I, you know, preserve my power. Because we've done that before. Um, anyway. And funding a secret network of candidates who ran in the 2019 general election. At least 11 candidates in total. Global News sources said the network includes members of both the Liberal and Conservative parties, some with winning ties to the Chinese Communist Party. According to sources, the funding, about a quarter million dollars, was allegedly transferred via an intermediary into the alleged network and was then transferred to a Canadian politician, an unnamed member of Ontario's provincial legislature, as well as an election staffer. Sources told Global News Canada is now being targeted more than other countries, and there is concern about how that could affect our democracy and our international reputation. This is a wrong message that uh, we are sending to the world, uh, not just to not just to the Chinese, but also uh, to our allies, that we are not uh, reliable, that we are not trustworthy. Sources repeatedly stress to Global News how serious these revelations are. CSIS told Global News it could not answer some of our questions for this story, but did confirm China's interference. Say okay. Let me let me let me backtrack this. So CSIS, which is the intelligence community here in Canada, that's kind of like our own version of the FBI, CIA, whatever. They are telling us it's so serious. That's undermining our national security and democracy. But they refuse to answer questions. But the only thing they can answer is China did this. No accountability, no evidence to prove it. But they're saying China did this. No further questions. Again, do you do you see how this is all suspicious? Uh, again, I'm not I'm not trying to confirm nor deny. That this is happening because this is the first time I'm seeing this. this is the first time word got brought brought to attention about this. But do you see how it's a little suspicious? It's a little bit suspicious that after witnessing the disaster of trying to sell us the propaganda of Russia Gate and one of the reasons why you know we are bombarded ourselves at the. Uh, Hatred of Russia is because of Russia Gate that they were trying to smear us for the last five years because the Democratic establishment could not contain themselves. They could not hold themselves accountable for losing their own election. And they still can't hold accountability to themselves. That now all of a sudden it's Canada's turn. Now all of a sudden Canada is the victim. Canada all of a sudden is just getting hacked and swarmed by random Chinese actors that we can't confirm nor deny, but it's a serious thing. We have no accountability, no evidence, but uh, they de they definitely did it. They definitely did it. Jesus? Jeez. Anyway, there's more of this. In an unusually direct statement, the Chinese Communist Party is using all elements of state power to carry out activities that are a direct threat to our national security and sovereignty. Sources tell Global News the briefs also discussed Operation Fox Hunt, a program intended to forcefully repatriate Chinese citizens wanted by the regime. The RCMP has said it's investigating three so-called Chinese police stations in Toronto, seen here. Community members worry about the regime's reach in Canada clamping down on rivals and dissidents. We are just very vulnerable. So that's why um, I would like to uh, repeat the uh, urges of um, many, many other community leaders that we need a foreign agent's uh, registration. The Trudeau government has been warned about vulnerabilities that have left Canada exposed for years. On Monday, the Prime Minister says he takes the threat seriously. The world is changing, and sometimes in, in quite scary ways. Uh, and we need to make sure that those who are tasked with keeping us safe every single day uh, are uh, able to do that. But experts say the government has taken too long to get tough. There certainly needs to be some signs that they're going to come up with some legislative fixes and not just come out with warnings every now and then, uh, because I think people are getting tired of it. 
And sources also say that Canadian MPs who voted to declare the abuse of the Uyghur population in China a genocide have been actively targeted in their writings. One of so many concerns about China. So there you go. You have to believe the propaganda. Otherwise, you're favorable to China. You're a Chinese puppet. You're part of the Beijing gang. You're, you're one of them. You're on our side or their side. Again, do, do you see how this is all suspicious? We just went through five years of this shit by everyone being be called a poon puppet. If you if you don't stand with the uh, imperialism, if you don't stand with the uh, propaganda of the American cultural system, if you don't stand in line with it, somehow you're a poon puppet. Somehow you're a Russiagate. You're, 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 you're an outsider. You're a traitor to this country. Now they're trying to do it here in Canada with China. <laughs> and making it sound like it's such a it's such a dangerous, serious issue. It's compromising our sovereignty. It's compromising our democracy. It's compromising our national security. We have no proof or evidence to prove any of that. That's what CISA is saying about this. Even Global News that are doing the, you know, fact-checking on this. They can't even hold themselves accountable. Well, sources say, well, what sources? Where's the proof? Where's the evidence? Where's the factual statements? You, I thought you had this exclusive, exclusive story that China somehow ruined the democracy in 2019 and paid off a bunch of politicians and somehow got themselves into parliament. What? What? Do you see how this is all suspicious? Do you see why I have to take a moment and step back and question all this? I'm not confirming nor denying this, but it is seem a little a, a little fishy that something like this, a revelation like this comes out just as we're about to turn the page and a, and and put aside the Russia smearing campaign that they're still trying to do. They're still trying to dig it from the bottom of the barrel. But I think people have gone over that. I think people have gone to realize that that was just nothing more than a hoax. It was an orchestration. It was a charade by the Democratic establishment because they had to find everything to do to demonize a, a reality star because they couldn't comprehend the fact that they lost their own election because they're unlikable. Hillary Clinton is an unlikable person. That's why she lost her own goddamn election. She couldn't comprehend that. That's why she had to orchestrate, along with the FBI intelligence communities, this fabrication of somehow another random country purposely undermined American democracy through memes and internet ad advertisements. <laughs> this literally just seems like a reboot, a, a rehashing, a reboot of Russiagate. So excuse me if I'm not as serious as these people are, as as serious as Justin Trudeau, who has never once called out the American interference of 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 other foreign elections, and America has taken part and interfered in many different elections, including ours. Nobody mentions a word about that. But as soon as uh something like China gets gets into the it gets into the news cycle, oh my god. All hell breaks loose. Just kind of very, very interesting. Um, just like this. Suspected Chinese hackers tampered with Canadian chat program. So it's not it's not just memes anymore, kids. It's also instant messaging. It's chat, it's messenger, <laughs> it's spies that are coming into the parliament building. I swear to God, sell this to FX, sell this to Hulu. They can literally make an entire series about this because this is just how deranged, suspicious, and uh, fabricated and almost make-believe this really is. And like I said, I can't confirm nor, nor deny that, but it just seems very, very fishy that this would come out. And after all that we've learned about Russiagate, after all that we've debunked and proven and investigated and all the smears that i've gotten all the smears that other people have gotten uh for trying to question the 
situation and actually holding accountability to the fact that it was a fabrication. This just seems very, very deranged. That and and also suspicious of the timing. Uh, what a coincidence that as we're closing and you know the sun is setting on the Russia Gate propaganda. Now the sun we're introducing China somehow hacking and and getting involved and interfering with the Canadian election. Somehow Canada becomes the victim, and ironically, right before an election year. So I can't say more than this. I can't say more than this because I can't. I I don't have all the information available. Uh, like I said, this is the first time I've heard about this, but it it does seem very very suspicious. Very suspicious. Thank you.